everybody. Uh, welcome to the uh, first inaugural uh, virtual Pell Grain uh, pub quiz. Uh, obviously, we are uh, figuring this out as we go. Uh, so, uh, but uh, we'd like to thank everybody for joining us, and uh, we'll give uh, people a few more minutes to start to gather, just as we would if this was a real pub, mm -hmm. because of course, uh, in both real and virtual pubs, people stagger in. And uh, if this was a convention, the convention organizer would be uh, outside in the venue, shouting at people, reminding them uh, that it's time to stop their games in midstream and go and drink and ans answer trivia questions. So we'll let the virtual version of that happen for a bit, but I've uh, brought my all important uh, prop with me. <laughs> I'd like to uh, toast all participants now and, uh, and thank you for coming. Cheers. 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 Uh, so I, I, some people uh, are from North America and are not used to having uh, pub quizzes as an important part of game convention uh, practice. And so uh, here to explain, uh, I'm familiar with this because I've been lucky enough to have been invited to uh, game conventions on the, on the continent and in the UK, although oddly never Never to Ireland, strangely enough. I'm working on it. <laughs> uh, it. Well, you've got more time now. Haven't you? You've got a buffer. Uh, yeah, that's, so, that's, that's, that's a lot of work for an alibi gar. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Kat and Gar, would you like to explain pub quizzes and their role uh, as a, a central part of socializing in uh, cons in the UK and on the continent? And in Ireland, of course. <laughs> in Europe. Um, so, yeah, um, pub quizzes are uh, usually, certainly in any, if you ever go to an Irish games convention, um, it will follow a particular social format in that every Friday evening there will be a pub <coughs> quiz and every Saturday evening there will be a charity auction. Um, and you might have heard of Irish charity auctions from such uh, awards as the Diana Jones Award, which we won for our ridiculous uh, slash read drunken uh, generosity in terms of giving to charity. Um, but the pub quiz is basically, it's uh, broken down into a selection of rounds. So I think we've got eight rounds um, in this one, one of which is a picture round. So we'll give you through a list of pictures and you can, we'll, Give you instructions on how that one works and each of us will present our own rounds in the pub quiz um, and we'll read out the answers um, you can write them down on a google forum that will be presented to you and then um, we'll gather up all the answers at the end and we'll work out who is the winner Ish, maybe. Ish, maybe like no there is nothing to win so it's just you know for the honor but you know, we think that the honor is a is a worthwhile thing to play for. Um, so, did I miss it? Did I leave anything out, Gar? I don't think so. Like, qu qu questions of radically varying difficulty, some <laughs> trivial, some fiendish. Um, I mean, with the with the, ref with the referees and so forth is uh, not not friend upon. <laughs> So, um, and there's also the question of teams versus individual play. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, how many people have come as part of a team? <laughs> okay. Yay! Uh, so, uh, uh, we will, I guess, count uh, differently. Uh, there'll be one uh, uh, semi-valuable, perhaps non-existent prize for the top team, and another uh, semi-valuable, perhaps non-existent prize uh, for the uh uh, top uh, singleton, uh, and uh, the, uh, we're going to uh, provide you uh, links to uh, Google Forms, uh, and uh, this will allow you to uh, type in your uh, uh, answers to the questions as you go along, and uh, a cat who is uh, responsible for all of the behind-the-scenes administration uh, will be uh, the one who is uh, scoring and keeping track and uh, I will be attempting to uh, uh, wrangle uh, here on the audio video side of things. And so, uh, is there further ado? Is, is there, uh, um, 
anything we haven't uh, yet specified? Because if not, uh, Kat, can you provide the link to the first round of the quiz? This is the nerd round, and these questions are uh, hosted and will be presented by our beloved uh, writer game designer, Gareth Ryder Hanrahan. Okay, so um, this, so you should all in chat have a link to a Google form. Um, so if you click on this, this is gonna be your answer sheet. So the key thing is to make sure that you write down your team name and you keep your team name the same for the whole quiz. Um, that's, that's going to be key to kind of identifying what your score is. And then there are going to be nine questions in this round. And you just type in your answers in those and then click submit when you're done. And we'll call out all the questions and keep a little bit of time at the end to kind of review them with your team or, um, but not hopefully not enough time to Google things. Um, well, you know, it's a, again, it's an honor system, right? You know, we just trust that you're not going to be Googling. Um, and then click submit and we'll get your answers. Right. Uh, n normally, heavy drinking hides any uh, glitches in the in the procedure. So uh, we're we're counting on you to to do your part in that, even though we're not able to do that together physically. Um, so uh, as every let's uh, show of hands, has everyone uh, got access to your uh, forums? Everybody good? Someone look panicked if you're not. Okay. I think <laughs> I think we're good. Uh, so uh, Gar, it's uh, time for you to pose. Some trivia questions, some nerd questions. Nerd questions, indeed. Um, right. Hello, everyone. Um, we've got um, uh, nine questions here. Uh, so we should start with question one. Uh, in Avatar The Last Airbender, plant bending and blood bending are special techniques associated with which of the four elements? Question two, uh, in uh, the novel Foucault's Pendulum, Belbo divides all humanity into cretins, fools, morons, and lunatics. What is his criteria for spotting a lunatic? What does a lunatic always bring up? If I was questions, by the way, I want to repeat our thing, like do the whole raise handy thing in uh, Zoom. Uh, question three, what is the name of uh, Sean Bean's character in Ronin? Question four, in Neuromancer, what's the name of the mansion of the Tessier Ashpool family on Freeside? Um, Question five, um, in Josiah Bancroft's novels, starting with Sin and the Sins, which tower does the Pragnus visit on his honeymoon? Question six, in the Earthsea series, what's the true name of the wizard called Sparrowhawk? Uh, in the Illuminata series, and the works of Timothy Leary, the acronym SMILE stands for Space Migration, Intelligent Increase, and WHAT. What's the LE stand for? Uh, in the visionary horror series Garth Marenghi's Dark Place, written by and starring horror visionary Garth Marenghi, what was Dark Place? And finally, in The Hobbit, Gollum was allowed three attempts to answer the riddle, what have I got in my pocket? Name any one of his answers. I feel like we need uh, royalty-free thinking music like they have on uh, Quiz <laughs> Jeopardy. Yes. Except royalty-free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I'm not humming it, because right. we know how YouTube is. Right. You should have had James Semple write us some thinking music. Exactly. This is very quiet for a thing that happens in an Irish pub. 
Well, for one, for one thing, can we use it to everyone? Oh, all right, yeah. yeah. Exactly, yeah. Well, that's, that's <laughs> a big part of it. Yeah, there there isn't really a like mute all button for Irish pubs. That's Wish not there was. Work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't be so joyless, Gar. It's it's all for a good cause or something. Well, it would usually be for a good cause, but yeah. not right now. Yeah. Well, this is for a good cause. It's just you know not a like charitable good cause. <laughs> I believe you're uh, uh, in charge of the picture round. Uh, which will require people to uh, look at pictures, and I guess will require some video editing on my part when we do it uh, for the. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't. Sorry, I didn't think about that before. I just randomly threw in a picture uh, round. Well, you're the one who pays for the video editing, so. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, uh, so, cat. So it's the best joke of all. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Cool. I guess for the benefit of, of people playing later on YouTube, uh, mm -hmm. picture number one uh, depicts a hand-to-hand uh, -hand knife combat on a cliff. Uh, picture number two, uh, there's a mysterious sigil repeated again and again and a dropper of something that suggests uh, perhaps a chemical that you should not imbibe. Uh, picture number three is a charismatic dolphin Picture number four is a short statured blue humanoid sapient alien being. Uh, uh, picture number five uh, is a demonic ass kicking with uh, multiple figures. Uh, picture number uh, six uh, depicts uh, what looks like a, a, a ornate uh, bizarre spacecraft of some kind. Picture number seven is an Old West poker game. Picture number eight is uh, three bullets, uh, one off to the side from the others. Uh, the other is a, an ad for Dr. Updike, Updike's patented pineal reviver. Re re sorry, let me say that again. Dr. Updike's patented pineal revivifier. An ad. And uh, uh, picture number 10 uh, is a, a, a car chase in a, a modern setting with exciting blur action lines. Uh, and uh, picture number 11 is uh, a, a long-haired figure in a forest pointing a wolf at someone. Uh, picture number 12 are uh, droplets of uh, uh, poison, but one of the droplets of poison is a word balloon uh, falling into uh, the ear of an unsuspecting figure, uh, reminiscent of the poisoning of King Hamlet. And I don't think that gave anything too much away. Other than quibbling with the characterization of the dolphin. Yeah. You, you don't think that's a charismatic dolphin, Gar? He's more sinister to me. He, he seems like, you know, slightly depressing. Sinister, sinister think, dolphins think, are the most charismatic of all. Sinister and charismatic? Yeah. Ever heard of Darth Vader? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I also I thought it looked more duplicitous, actually. That was, yeah. There so was adult, something adult daunting. A questionable it. aspect then. And all, all of those possible things, charismatic, uh, sinister, or duplicitous, could all be important traits in the game that Dolphin <laughs> is a player character in. Useful safety tip. Are, are, are we in uh, are we in thinking mode? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I, I hope we own the rights to that, Wade. We do indeed. <laughs> That's why we call it the music. <laughs> Feel free to call him that yourselves in social media postings or, <laughs> or not. <entries. laughs> Wade did the music rocket, everybody. I will I will buy a royalty free track at the drop of a hat. <laughs> or even if you just say hat. Internal war to say it a thousand times or not say it at all. Which is the one? Which is the one? <laughs> Sorry. It's 
reading somebody's answers. <laughs> Yes, Kat, are there like uh, partial points for uh, completely wrong but funny answers? Yes, I, I think definitely there are bonus points for, uh, for naming the Beatles <laughs> um, as part of your answers. You approve. I mean, there's Billy Preston, Murray the K, uh, Pete Best. Uh, Sutcliffe, what's his name, Sutcliffe? Stu 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 yeah, that's that's all four. That's four. That's the yeah. fab four right there. Yeah, looks like we're good. Okay, so uh, Ken, uh, you're doing two rounds uh, over the course of this, and the first one concerns Knights Black Agents, and we're going to find out if uh, your questions are just as difficult as Gar's. Gar's questions, Gar's questions were very difficult. These are these these are perfect questions. So whatever level of difficulty that is. That's Our questions not. were about books that didn't actually exist. <laughs> or, or books that no one cares about, a lot of them. <laughs> um, it was Pendulum Cuff. Yeah, I said a lot of them. <laughs> but Garth Marenghi, like that's a real name. Um, it's like Stu Sutcliffe. Question number one in the category Knights Black Agents. What work of literature is the source of the RPG name Knights Black Agents? Question number two. Speaking of literature and vampires, name the vampire haunted poet, poet who wrote Lamia and La Belle Dame Sans Merci. Question number three. It's the setting of the Michael Caine spy film The Destructors. It's the French end of the French connection heroin trade. And it's the low and slow city example in the Knights Black Agents core book. Name it. And uh, we, we got a request to space out the questions a bit more. All right, all right. I'll enjoy a lovely beer while people catch up. Question four. Give the full married name of the heroine of Bram Stoker's novel, Dracula, slash after action report. Question number five. Are we good on question number five? I have no sense as to whether or not people are, oh, Paula has to slow down, but that was the last one. Question number five. Every agent in Knights Black Agents can automatically succeed at one ability. What acronym refers to that ability? Question number six. Name the British television show that featured Idris Elba as part of a secret team of vampire hunting agents. Question number seven. Name any two of the suggested modes for Knights Black Agents play. Question number eight. What CIA official coined the phrase, a wilderness of mirrors, to refer to counterintelligence work. Question number nine. Is, is, it, is that a better speed? Is everyone cool? Oh, I'm sorry, which which we need? Please repeat. Which one? Eight, all right. Question number eight, repeating. What CIA official coined the phrase a wilderness of mirrors to refer to counterintelligence work?
Yes, that is true. Everyone should pay more attention to car tests. <laughs> Question number nine. The most extravagant and cursed supplement for the Dracula dossier comprised dozens of individually designed and aged documents and maps. After what character from the novel Dracula was it named? It's a long preamble with a very short question. So. Well, more pre than amble, really. Yeah, really. Well, it ambled. It ambled plentifully, I think. Question 10. The last American vampire panic climaxed in 1892 in what Rhode Island town? As a hint, the answer is doubly clever, but it's just as easy. People are just gonna ask to have questions repeated so they don't have to listen to the music. <laughs> Everyone should listen to the music. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Wade spent three ninety nine on that music. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that. We should have a tulpa round, Robin. Maybe for the next pub quiz. How do you know we haven't already? <laughs> it's true. Not one written by a tulpa, one about tulpas. Um, so uh, next up is uh, me with the uh, the Yellow King role playing game a question round. Okay, I assume everyone is good. Which alcoholic beverage popular during the Belle Epoque was said to evoke a hallucinogenic effect known as the Green Fairy? Which alcoholic beverage popular during the Belle Epoque was said to evoke a hallucinogenic effect known as the Green Fairy? Question number two. How many King and Yellow stories did Robert W. Chambers write? That's how many King and Yellow stories did Robert W. Chambers write? Wow, it's like watching Gutenberg start. <laughs> uh, question number three. What are the four books inside the slipcase for the Yellow King role-playing game? Question number three, what are the four books inside the slipcase for the Yellow King role-playing game? Number four, question number four, which of these books the books referred to in the aforementioned question, does not, does not include collage art by Dean Engelhardt. Which of these books does not include collage art by Dean Engelhardt? Question number five. In which ancestral homeland of game designer Rob Hainso did the printed copies of the Yellow King role-playing game spend an unsatisfactory period of time on a loading dock? Once more, question five. In which ancestral homeland of game designer Rob Hainso did the printed copies of the Yellow King role-playing game spend an unsatisfactory period of time on a loading dock. Question number six. What are the two types of cards you can receive when something bad happens to your Yellow King role-playing game character? That's question six. What are the two types of cards you can receive when something bad happens to your Yellow King role-playing game character? Question seven. What type of card is he ripped out your heart, showed it to you, then stuffed it back in?
That question once more is, what type of card is he ripped out your heart, showed it to you, then stuffed it back in? Question eight, what species of animal bedevils Mr. Wild, the earless antagonist of the story, The Repairer of Recrutations? That's question eight. What species of animal bedevils Mr. Wild, the earless antagonist of the story, The Repairer of Recrutations? Number nine, which decadent writer of the Belle Epoque believed himself to have been the victim of a sorceress assassination attempt by occult investigators Stanislas de Guaita and Josephine Peladon? That's question nine. Which decadent writer of the Belle Epoque believed himself to have been the victim of a sorceress assassination attempt by cult investigators Stanislas de Guaita and Josephine Peladon. And finally, that brings us to the final question, question number 10. Name the Parisian neighborhood where Belle Epoque revelers could attend nightclubs themed around hell, heaven, and the nothingness of death. That's question 10. Name the Parisian neighborhood where Belle Epoque revelers could attend nightclubs themed around hell, heaven, and the nothingness of death. Uh, so those of you looking at the chat can see that the questions are all in the chat. And uh, it's thinking time once again. So for those like me who are new to these shores, um, are the answers um, shared later on the web or shared at the end of this? We can, we can actually, usually there's a kind of a midway through pause where you kind of catch up on the answers from the previous rounds and then do a kind of a brief summary of where everyone is points wise. Okay, cool. Good. Yeah. So, All right. so we, will we will definitely, yeah. Good. Give you yeah. The answers. All right. Um, Usually associated with like, you know, everyone goes to the bar and gets a drink. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know, if you type in hold music for the same thing, it costs you 12 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> That also hey, you're going to be like, able to use this in all your meetings this yes. week, too. That also sounds like airline safety video music. It does. I think that you, I don't think it sounds like, I think, I think they bought it. <laughs> I think it was like the old airline safety music from like Continental or something. And yeah, exactly. Totally. Kind of lying around in a distressed yeah. assets pile. And they realized they could go ahead and make more money off it. So yeah. they're selling it. It makes people feel safe. A, a couple of the participants are in my gaming group, and uh, one of them has uh, accurately predicted that this is going to show up in my game. <laughs> Okay, uh, hands up if you still need a bit more time. I see no hands. So, uh, uh, Kat, the next, uh, the next link to the next set of questions. Did we want to take a pause here and look at scores and answers? Let's look at, let's look at scores and answers. Let's look at cool. scores and answers. Scores and answers theme. Um, definitely the music. And also answers. 
I, I hope we run the rights to all of those. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure we do. TM, TM, TM. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah, cool. It's weird. So Green you... used to print role playing games, but now they just do incidental theme music. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I think we've always done like incidental theme music as well as doing role playing games. But so. now we're, but now we, but now we you know, can really move in in this Zoom environment. Yeah. Well, when when we first started posting YouTube videos, YouTube was like, "Oh, you might want to like try and own the keywords for like RPG music," and I was like, "Okay, sure. cool, I guess." So yeah, that might be a thing. Um, yeah. So, Gar, do you want to do you want to go through the answers to your first round? Sure. Right, a fairly fast clip. Uh, in Avatar, plant and blood bending are techniques associated with water bending. Yay! Who goes pendulum? We, sh we should really unmute everyone so that they can all cheer when they've got it right. So, yeah. Right, or yell when they think that they were hosed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, or like shout abuse at Gar for his his, his incredibly difficult round. It was incredibly difficult. It's not that difficult. We're incredibly difficult. But we're very difficult. Okay. Anyway, um, for this pendulum, Belbo's criteria for spotting lunatics is that sooner or later they always pick up the Templars. Uh, Sean's being character in Ronin was Spence. Um, the Tessier-Ashpool Tessier family in Neuromancer lived in the Villa Straylight. Joshua Bancroft's novels, Stark Sims and Sons, are the, book, are the Books of Babel, because they got the Tower of Babel on a honeymoon. Um, Ged is the name of the true name of the wizard in Earthsea. Um, Smile, in the Illuminati series, stands for Space Migration, Intelligence Increase, and Life Extension. Garth Bringy's Dark Place is a hospital. And Gollum guessed that Bilbo had a knife, hands, string, or nothing in his pockets. And was wrong on all the cases. Although, technically, Gollum also guessed the precious, and Bilbo just disallowed the answer because he didn't know that the precious was the ring. Bilbo's a big cheater. <laughs> Justice for Smeagol. Um, cool. So uh, we've also got everyone's answers in, I think. Um, I'll check that for the NBA round. Um, so, Ken, do you want to go through the answers for that? Sure. Happy to. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, on a, in a relatively rapid clip, uh, what work of literature is the source of the RPG name Knights Black Agents? Macbeth by the great William Shakespeare. Uh, speaking of literature and vampires, the vampire haunted poet who wrote Lamia and La Belle Dame Sans Merci is John Keats. Uh, Michael Caine's spy film, The Destructors, The French End of the French Connection, and The City Example in Night's Black Agents, Low and Slow City Example, are all Marseille. Mm. Uh, the full married name of the heroine of Dracula is Wilhelmina Murray Harker. Every agent in Knights Black Agents can automatically succeed at their MOS, their MOS ability. Uh, British Idris Elba television show featuring vampire hunting secret agents, obviously one of the greatest television shows ever. Ultraviolet was its name, not to be confused with the terrible Mila Jovovich movie of the same name, <laughs> which also involved vampires, annoyingly. Uh, name any two of the suggested modes for Knights Black Agents play, any two of burn, dust, mirror, or stakes. Uh, the CIA official who coined the phrase a wilderness of mirrors is James Jesus Angleton. Angleton. We're looking for Angleton. The most extravagant and cursed supplement for the Dracula dossier is named after Peter Hawkins. Peter Hawkins is the answer we're looking for. The last American, I'm sorry, what? Was that just a PS, PTSD noise, Kat? A groan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. The last American vampire panic climaxed in 1892 in Exeter, Rhode Island. Uh, Exeter is both mentioned in H.P. Lovecraft's vampire story, The Shunt House, and of course, Exeter, England is the home 
of Peter Hawkins, as well as the Harker family. So there we are. Exeter, our last answer, as promised, uh, fun in a couple different ways. Yeah. Uh, so that brings us then to the uh, answers for the Yellow King role-playing game round. Tried to give you some easy ones here. We'll see if I succeeded. Uh, question one, which alcoholic beverage popular during the Belle Epoque was said to evoke a hallucinogenic effect known as the Green Fairy? This, of course, is absent. Uh, how many Yellow King and Yellow everyone stories? Got that right. Yeah, everyone. Good. That is that is the first question that everyone has gotten right. There we go. <laughs> I see you in giving everybody an easy question. Uh, the yes, next question is, how many King and Yellow stories did Robert W. Chambers write? And the answer is four. He only wrote four uh, King and Yellow stories. Uh, the next question is, what are the four books inside the slipcase for the Yellow King role-playing game? The answers are Paris, The Wars, Aftermath, and This is Normal Now. Uh, now, tricky one, which of these books does not include collage art by Dean Engelhart? And the answer is The Wars. Because it has, instead of that, has cool schematics uh, by the, uh, Melissa Gay, who did the regular illustrations for the book. Uh, the question number five, in which ancestral homeland of game designer Rob Hainso did the printed copies of the Yellow King role-playing game spend an unsatisfactory period of time on a loading dock uh, and the answer, if you know Rob or listen to our ads on Ken and Rob and Talk About Stuff, is Estonia. Estonia. Uh, the next question is, what are the two types of cards you can receive when something bad happens to your Yellow King role-playing game character? And the answer is shock and injury. Uh, next we come to what type of card is, he ripped out your heart, showed it to you, then stuffed it back in. Uh, and that's a bit of a tricky question because it is both a shock and an injury card as befits what happens to you when you confront the actual king in yellow. Uh, and you get a bonus point if you specify that it is also a continuity card. Uh, that is a card that you keep getting from scenario to scenario. Uh, question number eight is, what species of animal bedevils Mr. Wild, the earless antagonist of the story, the repairer of reputations? And of course is our favorite animal here at Pellegrin Press, that is a cat. Uh, number nine, which decadent writer of the Belle Epoque believed himself to have been the victim of a sorceress assassination attempt by occult investigators Stanislas de Guaita and Josephine Peladon, and that is Joris Karl Hoismans. Uh, judges can also accept his real name, Charles Murray George Hoismans, uh, and you may know, know him from being name-checked by Lovecraft. <coughs> And finally, name the Parisian neighborhood where Belle Epoque revelers could attend nightclubs themed around hell, heaven, and the nothingness of death. And that was, of course, the hipster neighborhood in 1895 in Paris, Montmartre. All right. Uh, okay, so yes, so the Phantom Hitchhikers are winning in the team round. Um, they're two points ahead of the next, um, uh, they're two points ahead of Team Acme. Um, and in the solos, uh, Grace and Quentin is is winning. He's three points. Sorry, I said he. Um, Gray is three points ahead of John Kingdon, who is coming in second in the solo round. And what are the numbers? <laughs> right. Uh, so the numbers are uh, Phantom Hitchhikers are on seventeen. Uh, Team Acme are on fifteen. Mm. Uh, Book are on thirteen. And uh, Lois. From two, but to be fair, they've only done one ring compared to everyone. Else. Right, so they're, they're they're obviously strong out of the gate. Oh so yes, exactly. Um, and then on the solo side, we've got um, Gray is on fifteen, uh, John is on twelve, uh, Yuri is on nine, and Stephanie is on seven. All right. So this I'm brings us to that if you can't be right, you can be funny. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. That is That's... a great. That's my whole career right there. Uh, so uh, we have... Why not uh, both? Yes. You can listen to an hour of it every, every week. Yeah. Um, so uh, next we have uh, round five, which is Rob Hainso's 13th age flavor, a.k.a. this one goes to 13. He's been part of a question. Now he's asking the question. It's Rob Hainso. And uh, we need the link for that, of course. <laughs> 
so when I turned over 13 questions and said this one goes to 13, I, I totally intended to cut it down to 10. But I guess that's sort of traditional, right? I did cut it down. Yeah. So, all right. So 13 questions. Are we ready? Yes. First one, what is the name of the geographical feature composed largely of living dungeons? Okay, in the history, some of it elaborated by Gar in Book of Ages, which type of monster reputedly arranged to destroy the previous icon known as the Grand Master of Flowers? Which type of monster did that? <gasps> Shock. So many hints possible. No, no hints. Okay. Uh, question three. What's the name of the game's only known alchemical golem? Question four, and this may not be fair at all, because to be honest, none of you were there. And I have no idea if we've ever talked about this, but <laughs> you might be able to guess. What was the final icon to be added to the mix of 13 icons? And there's a hint. We added it because player characters of a certain alignment didn't seem to have any options for icons to follow. That question again is, which was the final icon to be added? And the hint is in the chat channel. <clears throat> All right. And a very short question. What icon do the devils serve? Not the demons, the devils. <clears throat> All right, um, question number six. What's missing from the, and I'm gonna use the, let's, let's be clear. What's accidentally missing? <laughs> Due to Photoshop fuck up. Oh, bad language. Photoshop errors. It doesn't, in, no, never mind. <laughs> in the, uh, in the, um, the two page spread maps on the, in the, in the rule book and on the back pages, what's missing from those maps? I, I think technically if you, if you look at the Photoshop manual, there's no errors. There are only Photoshop fuck ups. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say, I, I never realized that that was uh, an error. It just seemed perfectly yep. fine. Cat is seeing the world as one of the icons would very much like to see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Let's well, see, I, th I thought the answer oh, was yeah. Chicago. <laughs> oh, this is good. It's like a Rorschach test. Yeah. It, it is point. missing okay. from the map, technically. Yeah. It, is, I mean, it, it is. is utterly missing from the map. There's, it's not there. You're right. Although then somebody caddy would perhaps uh, assign it to, no, no, nothing. <laughs> it's, it's missing. You're right. Yeah. Uh, number seven. Okay, this is a tough one. Which three monsters are associated with the Elf Queen in the 13th, or 13th Age Core Rulebook by using variants of her opal gem as their monster symbol? And Kat, I think we should give points to anybody who can figure out two of them. Okay. 
because that's a lot. So yeah. in other words, they use the queen's opal gem as part of their monster symbol. There's only three. All right, simple one. Question eight. What's the type of creature that is not allowed in Dragon Hall, even though that city is named the City of Monsters? Verboten. And I don't know how to say it in Estonian, sorry. Really should have learned. The Estonian probably means gently discouraged. I was going to say in Estonia, after they've learned the Russian and the German for verboten, they really don't have any more. <laughs> yeah, I, I was, there's so many jokes there, and I really yeah. shouldn't. Okay. Uh, question number nine. Which villains stole the gearwork dungeon from the dwarves? I'm looking over at Team Acme. Come on. <laughs> nope. <laughs> All right. That question is too hard. <laughs> Uh, and here's an easy one, I think, for some people. <laughs> um, who invented the 13th Age style montage in which one player proposes a problem and the next player solves it before <laughs> suggesting another problem? Somebody specific. And oh my God, we've done 10 questions. That's as much as everybody else got. But wait, it's still going. <laughs> and uh, question number 11. Uh, what's wrong with this sentence? A couple wizards, two occultists, and three druids walk into a bar. What is wrong with that sentence? Thank you, Wade. That's too big for pop quiz team. <laughs> uh, I'll make it quick with the next one. Which two player, character, talent, names are definitely acronyms? And question 13. How do you use the 12 sided custom icon die to roll random results for the 13 icons? And bizarrely, this uh, Lee Moyer is doing a series of small gods with Shauna McGuire. And today's picture shows the 13th age 12 sided die um, for the small god Sir Tunti of Chance on the Small God series. So this, this picture is very timely. The question is, how do you use that die? And we're done. <laughs> uh, we move on to Wade, the Music Rocket, and his trivia round. All right. Thank you, Robin Laws. Uh, welcome to my trivia round. Uh, question one. We need the sheets. Yes. Yes, oh. you do. Question one. Where's the sheet? <laughs> question yeah. zero. Where's the sheet? Yeah, exactly. It's all like manage expectations around sheet having... What is the URL for the sheet? For the sheet. <laughs> All right. Everybody everybody got the, yes, you have the link? All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Question one. In the movie, The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Division, what is the name of the aerospace company secretly run by red electroids? Question two. 
All Lectroids have something in common that a character describes as being, quote, statistically impossible, unquote. What is it? Question three. In the 1984 punk rock sci-fi comedy Repo Man, what is in the trunk of the radioactive Chevy Malibu? Question four. Game designer Mike Shea, a.k.a. Sly Flourish, has written for C-Page XX. In the 1970s, his father Robert co-authored a trilogy that inspired a best-selling card game in the 80s. What was the name of the trilogy? Question five. In the 1979 movie, Time After Time, who does H.G. Wells pursue into the 20th century in a time machine of his own invention? Team Acme is showing signs of life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in that same movie, H.G. Wells' glasses break during the journey through time. Where does he find a replacement pair? <laughs> Question seven. The real-life H.G. Wells wrote the screenplay for a 1936 movie in which a benevolent international conspiracy of airmen saves civilization. What was the title, either of the movie, or the novel on which it was based. 1936 H.G. Wells movie. Question eight. Decades before Wells' novel and screenplay, Richard Kipling imagined a 21st century ruled by the Aerial Board of Control in two of his short stories. What's the title of one of those stories? I see a lot of people looking at each other in puzzlement. <laughs> the hell? Uh, Kipling's novel Kim is a classic work of spy fiction that popularized a term for the political conflict between Russia and Britain in Central Asia. What is that term? And question 10. Which classic espionage role-playing game came with the sample adventure Operation Sprechenal Testel? Sprechenal Stella. Sprechenal Stella. <laughs> and that are all the questions. So that was mostly 19th century trivia from Wade the Music Rocket. Now it's thinky time once more. The uh, link for uh, the next one, uh, Ken is back up with Trail of Cthulhu. I'm Woo! sure everybody will know all the answers to Ken's questions about the Mythos. All right. All right. Form is up. Form is up. Question number one. Name any one god of the Cthulhu mythos with an entry in the Trail of Cthulhu core book created by Clark Ashton Smith. Not the entry, the god. Name any one god of the Cthulhu mythos with an entry in the Trail of Cthulhu core book created by Clark Ashton Smith. Are we going to lose points for spelling? Uh, not on this one. <laughs> Unless Kat takes them off because she doesn't like your penmanship. I don't know. <laughs> Kat, Kat's scoring, not me, but yeah. as far as I'm concerned... You're, you're not going to lose points if you misspell a mythos entity, but you might summon one. 
Yeah, you lose sand. Yeah. There is one of these questions in which spelling counts. I will say that, but not this one. Name Lovecraft's, question number two, name Lovecraft's paradigmatic investigative horror novel, his longest work of fiction. Name Lovecraft's paradigmatic investigative horror novel, his longest work of fiction. His longest work of fact, of course, is about Canada. Canada. The answer we were looking for was never Canada. Arch. Question number three. The standard gumshoe ability bullshit detector appears under what name in Trail of Cthulhu? The standard gumshoe ability bullshit detector appears under what name in Trail of Cthulhu? Question number four. Lovecraft's fiction contains two towns named Innsmouth. Where are they located? Lovecraft's fiction contains two towns named Innsmouth. Where are they located? Question number five. What is the most expensive item listed in the technology, weapons, and equipment chapter of Trail of Cthulhu? The most expensive item listed in the technology, weapons, and equipment chapter of Trail of Cthulhu. As game designers call it, the gear chapter. Question number six. Name the inventor of the ultraviolet resonator in Lovecraft's tale, From Beyond. Name the inventor of the ultraviolet resonator in Lovecraft's tale, From Beyond. Question number seven. The Kingsbury Horror, the scenario, oops, sorry. There we go. The Kingsbury Horror, the scenario included in the Trail of Cthulhu core book, is based on which historical serial murder case? The Kingsbury Horror, the scenario included in the Trail of Cthulhu core book, is based on which historical serial murder case? And here's the one where spelling counts, everybody. Write as much as you can of the six-word credo of the Cthulhu cult without misspelling or mispunctuating a word. Little advice, start with the word you already know how to spell and work out from there. Don't try to go in order. Everyone <laughs> should be getting at least one-sixth of this answer. <laughs> Could you maybe read it out, Ken? Write as much, uh, oh, you want me to re read it out and just make it a, a, a spelling test entirely? A spelling bee question? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, the six word credo of the Cthulhu cult, Fulglui Mungwanoff Cthulhu Rilia Wachnagel Fatagen. Fulglui Mungwanoff Cthulhu Rilia Wachnagel Fatagen. I've already used it in a sentence. The sentence was Fulglui Mugwanoff Cthulhu Rilia Wagnagel Fatagan. When this goes live, you can save that uh, and turn it into your ringtone. I could do that, but I don't believe in ringtones. There is no way that people can record it and loop it and play it backwards and get us into some trouble beyond copyright trouble, is there? No. Okay. We're, we're sure about that. All we're that sure about is that the walrus was Paul and something about Satan, whatever. Okay. All right. Question number nine. Out of copyright, anyway. You know, it's it's been public domain for forever. Uh, oh, yeah, no, I was I was I was more concerned about us getting into um yeah into more mythosy trouble into than Satan you. trouble or Neolithic trouble. Yeah, that kind of. Question number nine. 
the last question of the Trail of Cthulhu round. Name all three hounds supplements for Trail of Cthulhu. Name all three hounds supplements for Trail of Cthulhu. Yeah, I think it's time for a catch-up round. Yep. It's time to catch up with Cat. Yay! Da, 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 da. <laughs> this, 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 this one needs a lot more incidental music than most of our panels do. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll add them in post. Yes. <laughs> Will you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just like yeah. also that there are no show notes. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right, so um, now that I've sorted things out into who's a solo person, who's a team person. Um, so currently leading in the uh, solo round is John Kingdon. Um, and uh, coming second, so John is winning on 31 points. Um, and coming in second, something undone by the 13th age round because he doesn't have 13th age is Gray on 27. Um, and then we've got Yuri on 16 and Stephanie on 14. Now, if I if I recall our last wrap up, uh, we also gave the answers. Yes, I'm uh, going to go through the teams as well because okay. we've got solo people and we've got team people. Um, so currently winning in the team category is um, oh, it's the situation's pretty much unchanged, even though the results have been up and down. So the Phantom Hitchhikers are still winning on 34 points. Um, and this is at the end of one, two, three, four, five, six rounds. Um, and a very close second on 32 points, only two points behind them, are Team Acme. Um, and then we've got uh, Team Black Book on 22 points. And Low Expectations coming in with the picture round, but still around behind everyone else, so um, is on 17 points. Rob, the 13th uh, age uh, uh, answers. All right. Uh, question number one, then. The geographical feature composed largely of living dungeons is Omen. It's an island of living dungeons just piling up on top of each other. The monster that reputedly arranged to destroy the Grand Master of Flowers, Ogre Magi. Um, and so my my character, Monk, like uh, is really twisted. Um, What's the uh, Sam, smiling Sammy G is the disturbing appearance character from 13 True Ways who was the game's only known alchemical golem and if you didn't have that book you definitely didn't have this answer. Um, Kat did yeah there it is. Kat uh, did did anybody get the final icon to be added to the mix of 13? It is the Crusader. Uh, um, it looks like that team right there in the middle. That's um. What's their name, man? Sorry, I was muted again. Yeah, I was saying actually quite a few people got that. Oh, so. good. All right. The Crusader. There's no lawful yeah. legal icons, really, except, but definitely him. Um, actually, a team in the middle were in one of them. All right. Good. Um, what icon do the devil serve? Trick question. They are not actually associated with any icon. In 13 True Ways, they're all defined by the choice of which icon they oppose. And... Uh, Mr. Thank Mr. Robin Laws for that. Um, he that was his part, and uh, he added that. It was really cool. Um, when we did the Dragon Empire maps in question number six, somehow we left out the roads. And the really embarrassing thing is, I didn't even notice until the French translator said, "What is wrong with your maps?" <laughs> <laughs> They look, you know, they look really kind of flavorful, and like they, I, I literally did not know until I read that answer that the roads weren't on it. They look really good, and look but if really you look, good. if you look at the little maps inside the book, they all have roads. So if any adventuring party knows not to trust the roads. Come on, that's exactly where you're going to get ambushed. As soon as you show your players a road on a map, they're going to go off into the wooded part. <laughs> the, the three monsters associated okay. with the Elf Queen in the Thirteenth Age Core Rulebook are the Drider, the Medusa, and the Storm Giant. And that's just a, that's a, that's a, that's a walk into the bar joke all on its own. Uh, the type of creature that is not allowed in Dragon Hall, orcs. No orcs. Um, 
for reasons that will somebody is writing something about details, but you know, I just we just left them open. Which villains stole the gearwork dungeon from the dwarves? Oh, those nasty fire giants. Um, that that's another Thirteenth Age adventure book. Who invented the Thirteenth Age style montage in which one player proposes a problem? That was Ash Law. Um, she was writing the 13th Age OP modules. She did it a lot of times, so often, and people liked it, that when uh, Wade and Cal worked on the GM screen, they uh, wrote it all up, and then I remember writing an example or two, and yeah, so Ashley Law. Uh, what's wrong with this sentence? A couple wizards, two occultists, and three dru druids walk into a bar. I, well, I don't know what people wrote, but the occultist is one of a kind. There's only one of them in the campaign. All right. Uh, Somebody talent. also said that um, oh, occultists don't drink. And I was like, that's a good answer. I, I was wondering. I was like, there's many ways to do a punchline. Yeah. I, I would like to give them credit. Which two talent names okay. are definitely acronyms? Good. Um, the paladin has two talents that are sort of opposed. The path of universal righteous endeavor and way of evil bastards. So, uh, yeah. Pure and web. How do you use the 12 sided custom die like these? Like right here. They're, I don't know, where's my camera? Ah, oh, there they are. Yeah. Um, they don't have a, a Prince of Shadows symbol on it because technically a lot of the Empire says he doesn't exist. So whenever the game master rolls to find out what's going on, the game master secretly decides one icon that is not involved, absolutely not involved, but doesn't tell the player. And then if the player rolls that icon, it's actually the Prince of Shadows. So that is it. Did anyone get that one? No. Okay. Good. Quite a few people, yeah. Great, good. And I'm out of here. All right, so okay. uh, next, uh, Wade the Music Rocket with the answers to his trivia questions. All right. In the movie The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Ape Dimension, what is the name of the aerospace company secretly run by Red Electroids? Yoyodyne Propulsion Systems. Or just Yoyodyne would be uh, acceptable. All Electroids have something in common. What is it? Uh, they're all named John. In Repo Man, what's in the trunk of the radioactive Chevy Malibu? Dead aliens. Uh, what trilogy did uh, Sly Flourish's dad co-author that inspired a best-selling card game? That would be the Illuminatus trilogy. Uh, in Time After Time, H.G. Wells, uh, who does he pursue into the 20th century in a time machine of his own invention? That's Jack the Ripper. In that movie, Wells' glasses break during the journey through time. Where does he find a replacement pair? The answer is in his own desk, which is on display in a museum. Uh, the real-life H.G. Wells wrote a screenplay for a 1936 movie uh, about a uh, benevolent conspiracy of airmen. What was the title of the movie or the novel? Uh, that would be Things to Come or The Shape of Things to Come. Rudyard Kipling imagined a 21st century ruled by the Aerial Board of Control in two short stories. Uh, those stories were With the Night Mail and As Easy as ABC. Kipling's novel Kim popularized a term for the political conflict between Russia and Britain and Central Asia. What was that term? The Great Game. And finally... Uh, which classic espionage RPG came with the sample adventure Operation Sprechenal Testel? That would be Top Secret, which I think was the first game I ever GM'd, was running that adventure. And those were my questions. And that brings us to the uh, Trail of Cthulhu round. Uh, name any one god of the Cthulhu mythos created by Clark Ashton Smith with an entry in the Trail of Cthulhu core book how I should have phrased it in the question, any of Mordigian, Quachal Utaus, or Tsethagwa? Tsethagwa is the gimme in that question. Uh, Lovecraft's longest work of fiction is The Case of Charles Dexter Ward. 
uh, the standard gumshoe ability bullshit detector appears under the more decorous uh, Lovecraft approved name Assess Honesty in Trail of Cthulhu. Lovecraft's fiction contains two na towns named Innsmouth. Where are they located? Massachusetts and England. I would also have accepted, we would also accept Cornwall uh, for the second town. Uh, chronologically, the first town, because it appears in Calafeus uh, in 1920, 11 years before uh, Innsmouth. What is the most expensive item listed in the technology, weapons, and, and equipment chapter of Trail of Cthulhu? The most expensive item is the Graf Zeppelin. Uh, we also accept airship dirigible or Zeppelin, but not blimp. It's not a blimp. It's an rigid airship. And it costs $3 million. I would have accepted blimp. Hashtag no, just saying. Should not have accepted blimp. You're, you're well, I would have. Blimp people. Well, I would have. Well, you should not. Name the inventor of the ultraviolet resonator in Lovecraft's Tale from Beyond. The answer is Crawford Tillinghast, easily the best Lovecraft name. Uh, the Kingsbury Horror is based on the Cleveland Torso Killer case, or Cleveland Torso Murderer case, if you are fancy. Uh, write as much as you can of the six-word credo of the Cthulhu Mythos. I will merely... Paste the answer into the sheet so that everyone can see where they should have apostrophized. I'm sure that the apostrophes are the only thing that messed people up. And the three hounds supplements for Trail of Cthulhu are, of course, Book Hounds of London, Dream Hounds of Paris, and The Ringer, uh, Tomb Hounds of Egypt, which was in Ken Writes About Stuff. Uh, but hopefully, maybe it will be a book someday. But uh, for right now, those are the three supplements, uh, the three hounds. Thanks for playing, everybody. This has been Trail of Cthulhu. Uh, so that brings us to our final two rounds. Uh, and uh, that means it's time for Kat to paste in the link to the gumshoe questions, which will be posed by Gar. Question one, uh, which of the following is not an investigability in East Terra's second edition? Your options are forensic accounting, forensic anthropology, forensic entomology, forensic psychology, or forensic toxicology. Are you making a point there, Gar? <laughs> oh, don't know what kind of point you'd think he'd be making. Surprising he wants to bring that up again. Parasitic oh, wasps well, well. got a parasitic wasp. That's all I can say. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a cool back. Area man does not learn lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Area man's still involved in role playing games, obviously. <laughs> Here it's the second edition. I identify three styles of play: the one shot, the campaign, and what? What? In Mutant City Blues, um, a mysterious pandemic starts in January of the year and spreads all over the world. This plague triggers a sudden mutation event, but it's also known as the something. Oops, why is that? Uh, paste, I'm your paste. Yay. In Ashen Stars, what was the original name of the species known as the Vas Mal? Or now known as the Vas Mal. I think spelling is entirely optional in this one. Uh, in the first lesson, a used by Pelgrane was a quartet of missions named after the principal antagonists. Name that quartet. Or, you know, attempt to spell it, because certainly there are like four different spellings in the book. <laughs> Must be in the manuscript. Um, we already had that um, Bull Detector was renamed as Assess Honesty in Trail. 
What is this in Time Watch? In the upcoming Swords of the Serpentine RPG, the goddess of the city of Erisig holds which divine portfolio? In the Yellow King RPG, if you had electronic surveillance and people person on your character sheet, which of the four books are you playing? How far have you gotten in the campaign? And finally, another callback. Which Pelvian product involved the most tea and caused the most suffering? And this is really me going far too close to the sun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and it's also like at least the, the second question about it as well in this pop quiz. Well, I don't think I'm not watching that. We're honoring your service, Kat. Yeah. Well, I, I know it's not Gar doing this. I know it's the parasitic wasp. Yeah, don't don't hate on don't hate on the meat shell. <laughs> Okay, and there's, I understand there's, there's nine questions, but there's uh, 10 slots. So uh, the 10th the slot is just there to further confuse you. Or it can be the slot for the fall of Delta Green bonus round five point question. If we don't have a, a, a form for it yet. We have a form for it. Okay. All right. Then we're good. Then it's just a blank slot to write your deepest, most beautiful dreams and prayers in. And then send a cat because cat will resolve everyone's deepest and most beautiful dreams and prayers. No, all right. I've been. I'm. 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 I'm hearing that cat will not resolve those dreams or prayers. I. I, I do. I do have a question. Uh, if if we want to do one on the fly. No, sure. we, I mean, it'll throw the the numbers off. It'll, 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 if it's on the sheet, no, because I, I added it to the sheet when Gar added four questions, and then we took out those questions, and then, yeah. I reckon ask it, Wade, do it. I was, do I, it. I, was going to, I was going to propose the question, uh, what is Rob Hameso's favorite gumshoe ability? <laughs> yeah, that is a that is a, a bonus round. <laughs> yeah, awesome. I love it. All right, good to go, then to the ultimate round, the final, the most fittingly apocalyptic of rounds, that is Ken with the Fall of Delta Green round. And this is a final bonus question. I guess it's not, they're all bonus questions, really. Everything we're doing is a bonus question. This is a bonus bonus question uh, to round the total up to 100, now 101. Uh, and here it is. Fall of Delta Green bonus question. The Fall of Delta Green core book calls Yagalanak the Headless One. For one point each, name the five other great old ones who appear in the core book under a different name than their original version. And because we are nice, you can give either version of the name in your answer. And I say we are nice, meaning I am nice. Delta Green core book calls Yagalanak the Headless One. For one point each, name the five other great old ones who appear in the core book under a different name than their original version. You can give either version of the name. Either version. Either version. If you're saying that looks like the kind of question someone would come up with at almost literally the last minute when... Cat discovered we had 95 points worth of questions. All I can say is that's a hurtful, hurtful thing to say. Also, you may have detected that the composer of that question was very excited to realize that there were five great old ones under different names and then mortified to realize there were actually six. <laughs> when he realized he could use the easy one as the example.
Okay, let's go to gallery view to see how confused people look. That looked like a hard question based on the Good. faces of our supposed to be. participants. Yeah, I'm looking at the answer and I think it's a hard question. <laughs> like, Meant to be. It's a bonus question. It's Fall of Delta Green. Everything gets harder in Fall of Delta Green. That's why there's lethality rules in it. <laughs> uh, does anyone need more time? Hands up. Uh, I see no hands, so I think it is uh, time. Do we want to, for this one, do we want to do the answers and then the final totals? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Uh, so that brings us back to Gar, I believe. Right. Uh, the historicability that's not in the book uh, is forensic toxicology, which would like, you know, be useful. Um, for itself, uses the uh, campaign, the one-shot, and the miniseries. The Mysterious Pandemic Immunity Blues is the ghost flu. Uh, the creatures known as the Vast Mal were originally the space-faring and energy being the Vast Kra. The Zelozdi Quartet was the first NBA campaign. Uh, in Time Watch, Cess Honesty or Bush Detector is Falsehood Detector, I believe. Or false Detection, because, you know, Kevin. Um, in Sword of the Serpentine, um, the goddess is the goddess of trade. If you had electronic surveillance and from person in Yellow King, you would be on to This Is Normal Now. And as has already been repeatedly established, the Pelican product involving the most tea and suffering was the Hawkins Papers. Hey. Yay. Yay. <laughs> you see, Cash, you, it, it, took, it took some time, but now you can be mocked for it. So, you know, that's all good. Such a parasitic wasp thing to say. And yeah. uh, 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 Wade, uh, your final question. Oh, uh, Rob, Rob Hainso, what is your favorite gumshoe ability? That's right, it's obfuscate. <laughs> uh, which is, uh, yeah, I, and, and if you're not familiar with it, uh, definitely read through all of your gumshoe books to find it. It's And then buy the ones you don't have. Buy the, yeah. It might be it it must be in those have. ones. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And, and that is the prize for tonight's uh, winners. We'll get the, all the gumshoe books with that ability in them. Um, and uh, finally, uh, the uh, special super duper uh, multi part end question, Ken. The answer is the, the, the hard question, like all the, the rest. The hard question. Yeah, yeah. I'm still counting here, by the way, just letting you know. All right. But the, but the questions have been turned in, right? I'm not. Okay. Uh, the five. Other great old ones who appear in the core book under a different name than their original version. In addition to Ramsey Campbell's Yagalanak, uh, there is Ramsey Campbell's Glocky, who appears as Galista, Clark Ashton Smith's Abhoth, who appears as Aavi, Clark Ashton Smith's Atlock Naka, who appears as Tleche Naka, August Durleth's Ithakwa, who appears as Itlashwa, and August Durleth's Cthuga, who appears as Kutugwa. And those who are uh, alert for emanations and vibrations may have picked up on why those were chosen to get different and more exciting names. They're known as the rights issues mythos. Exactly. <laughs> so if you found the, uh, the gumshoe round challenging, I'll just note that I was responsible for making up half the things that the answers were about and would have had to look them all up. <laughs> for image uh, number one, the two people wrestling on the cliff, I believe, um, it was from the Looking RPG, from The Wars, by Melissa Gay. Uh, the um, acid droplet or acid blotter um, with the yellow sign on it was from the Fall of Delta Green uh, by Jen McCleary. Um, the, oh, me, the dolphin, wouldn't it? The, 
the charismatic and under receptive dolphin was from um, Brother the Snow from Hillfolk and was by Shell Khan. Uh, the uh, Blue Alien was a drug from Ashland Stars by Jerome Huguenin. Uh, the Big Demon Smash the Throne was by, from 13 True Ways and was by Lee Moore and Aaron Connell. Um, the next image, which I kind of remember was exactly like what right? was from The Gay and Reach by Henry Wade. Uh, the uh, Outlaws of the Inn um, was from Owl Hoot Trail, and the artist was Witch Longmore. Um, the next image, I think, was, was the, the Bullets, I think it was. Uh, was for Cthulhu Confidential by Christian Nutson. The um, the um, Pineal Gland Rivenfire was for Hideous Creatures and was by the wonderful Dean Engelhart. The Car Chase was from Double Tap for NBA by Phil Reeves. Um, the 11th image, which escapes me, is from Lore Finder, that's by Chris Huth. And the and with the uh, with the wolf, the ah yes, wolf at the thing. Yeah, the the, the point person point to wolf with someone was from um, Lord Frank Booker's Hut. And the uh, poison of the ear was the cover art to Schemers, and that was by Jason Morningstar. Mm -hmm. So final score, uh, Stephanie Franklin is on twenty five points. Um, Yuri Button just slightly ahead on twenty six. Um, very, very, very close then. Um, and it's been neck and neck the whole way through between John Kingdon and Grayson Quinton. And the final scores were John Kingdon got 43 and Grayson Quinton got 44. Yeah. Oh. So just oh, one point in it at the end. And well done to Gray for being our solo winner of <laughs> the gumshoe book that contains Obfuscate. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and then the team results. Um, so again, low expectations ended up being around behind everyone else. So they ended up on 30 points, which is a super respectable score. Uh, team Black Book um, on 36 points. Uh, team Acme on 47 points. And the winners of the team section, the Phantom Hitchhikers on 53 points. Ooh. Wow! Very impressive. So, Yikes. in a pub quiz at this point, it'd be traditional for teams to shout "fix, fix," <laughs> <laughs> and point out the fact that like, you know, the winning team are ex Calgary people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. You, you can do that if you want to. I guess. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> Uh, well, are are uh, you saying that Team Phantom Hitchhiker will not get the semi-valuable <laughs> prize of every gumshoe book with obfuscate in it? I mean, that's harsh, but fair. <laughs> I think it's only harsh on Rob, really, to be honest. <laughs> I said it was fair. Well, uh, we did it on April 1st, then, so that's the most fun. fine. Uh, well, uh, if, if this was an Irish convention, uh, no one would notice that the pub quiz had ended, and people would just continue drinking, uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's on Zoom, uh, so all, uh, and as they say, all Zoom things must come to an end, uh, so mm -hmm. thank you so much, everybody, for coming and hanging out with us and uh, letting us uh, uh, create a little bit of the convention experience uh, mm -hmm. together uh, online, and uh, 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 thanks a lot, and, and enjoy your uh, uh, semi-valuable uh, prizes on behalf of uh, uh, Ken, Cat, Rob, uh, Wade, and the Parasitic Wasp. Uh, we would all like to uh, uh, thank you for coming. And uh, next week, uh, we have an exciting uh, panel in the ta same time slot where uh, Legend of Gaming Sandy Peterson will be joining us as we discuss uh, adding Cthulhu to your fantasy game. So if that is your cup of tea, uh, please join us uh, for that. And uh, otherwise, I will raise my now empty glass and thank everybody for coming. Thanks a lot, everybody.
Cheers, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.